do that. Look at some of the other creative anti-Asian measures that they have. The yellow peril. Oh my gosh, the yellow man is going to take over America. And if you go back and search through the internet, you can just see all of these scathing, scathing reports and press releases, posters out against the yellow people. So they have these anti-Oriental movements. Uh, Arizona started coming up with laws, the alien land law, you can't own land. And then there were two pieces of legislation that came out to sit particularly to lessen the Filipinos coming in as immigrants. Now we'll take a look at what's happening with the Japanese. They've gotten the Chinese problem kind of settled, okay? But now we've got those Japanese coming in here. They're coming in here, they're taking over our land, they're, you know, buying up all of our farmland, and they're making more profit. They're living off of our American land, which has got to stop. Sorry. So they came up with this Asian Exclusion League, the Asiatic Exclusion League. But you know what? It later on changed to the Japanese Exclusion League. And the league was formed by union leaders. Because the union leaders were going to protect the American farmers. Look at the legislation that was uh, proposed and passed here in California. Again, several pieces aimed at stopping the Japanese farmers. A lot of it they put, oh, I'm sorry, a lot of it they put as um, Asian, but some of it was really targeted to the Japanese. And you look at the one in 1913, the Alien Land Act. This stopped the Japanese from owning land, and it stopped the Japanese from leasing it. So if you can't own it, you can't lease it, then you certainly are going to have a tough time farming it on your own. Remember with the San Francisco quarantine for the Chinese? They say that the Chinese were bringing in the bubonic plague. Again, it's the same tactic from the media. Now, the Japanese are the germs, and we're going to be a bigger problem. <laughs> we're going to be a bigger problem than uh, the blacks in the South. Same, same tactic. So in 1909, now look at the number of Japanese that we have here. 135,000. Again, that's nothing in comparison to that 35 million uh, European immigrant figure, but it's because we stand out. They know who we are. They know we're Asians. They know, they know that we're different. So here it is. The people are alarmed, particularly the farmers, because we're going to take something from them. And what is very sad, if you study for the next 50 years, we just don't have time to go through. We only have to get the highlights today. But it's the same thing. An Asian group comes in in a way, then they're discriminated against. Then there are acts and ordinances against them. Very, very sad journey for the Asian American. Finally, in 1917, they took a different twist with legislation here. Now they're going to put in this part about being literate. Now my grandparents came here in 1900. They came as farmers. My grandparents were not really literate. So this would have barred them. You have to be literate in some language to 